going to ask you about collaboration, mm. maybe first of all about the long collaboration of the company, what does that mean, what's the, what's the pluses, can you think of any? Um, <laughs> would it, wouldn't it all be simpler if, if, uh, if everyone just listened to me? Yeah. <laughs> Something I really like about collaboration is, is, is you never quite know what other people are going to do and I like being surprised um, by the things that I'm involved in. Um, I feel like if I can imagine the whole project in my head, um, that's not so interesting. That's a nice daydream. But I, I'm, I'm more interested in, in projects where you start somewhere and then the place you end up is, is completely a surprise. It's me, isn't you know, it? No, it's me. With Forced Entertainment, uh, collaboration means a few different things. Um, in one sense, I think it means like a long-standing commitment to working together with other people. Um, and that means a sort of uh, political commitment to shared authorship, shared ownership, shared decision-making. So it's a sort of extremely, in that sense, non-hierarchical way of working. Everything that we do comes from a kind of collective uh, process. And that's a long, that's a long project, and it's a it's a long project that's, in a way, in in opposition to, the way that most of the theatre, uh, kind of culture works, in the sense that, for the most part, uh, theatre is understood to be about writers, and about, authorial directors who've got kind of, uh, a vision that they want to, enact on a group of other people. It doesn't matter who. what's really special and unique to us is it's been pretty much the same group of people from that day, from the beginning. And I think what, what that long-term collaboration with that small group of people gives you is, is sort of uh, the opportunity to really dig deep into things. Um, when I've worked a bit with other people uh, in a sort of collaborative way. Uh, the thing I really notice, there's not this kind of desire to, to sort of really be rigorous and go down into something, and that's what I really get with Force Entertainment. You learn a process together, um, and people might have different takes on that or different parts of the process that they prefer or that they're better at. Um, but over time, you, you really sort of begin to appreciate your own strengths and weaknesses and also those of your colleagues. And then collectively, of course, it all adds up to much more than you could achieve on your own. While you're with us here tonight, I'd like to ask you to forget about everything. When we're in the rehearsal studio, um, Everything comes in a kind of process of negotiation, um, conversation, improvisation, trying lots of different things together. Um, and it's a process where everybody can contribute, but it's not a process where everybody contributes in the same way. And I think that's something that's quite special to what we've developed and how we've begun to understand over the 40 years of the practice what collaborating with other people might mean. You know, some people excel in discussions, some people hardly speak. But when we get into the improvisational space in the rehearsal room, it might well be people who've not been talking much in the last couple of hours who actually get up and make the move that changes the whole trajectory of the piece. Wait, not like this, not like this, not like this, not like this. Not like this. The show that we made uh, last year, like Signal to Noise, it was really uh, a, a project where it felt like we were kind of swimming in the dark for a long time, not really knowing what it was, uh, where it was going or what it was about even. Or, um, and it feels a bit like a piece where there, there could, it could have been lots of other things. I, I tend to kind of go with things very quickly. So if some, something is proposed in the space, I'm like, okay, that's cool. Let's, what can we do with that? Whereas I feel like in, in 
a process like signal to noise it was it was all about kind of finding like well, what is the kind of essential thing that we're looking at here and um, yeah there, there was a lot of kind of rejecting of, of material and, and ideas and that was kind of a nice experience for me to to step back from things rather than kind of always moving towards things that were were happening any idea that takes place in the work any any material that gets explored you have the benefit that that goes through a kind of exploration and interrogation by all the people who are involved in the process so i think we see that as a kind of uh strength testing um any idea that makes it through to the stage, any material that makes it through to the stage, will have been pretty much torn to pieces in the process many times by different people who've got one kind of problem with it or another. It means that there's a sort of rigour to the material and to the interrogation of the material, and that comes from many different kind of perspectives. We've spent a long time building a kind of shared vocabulary. So um, what's held in the rehearsal room and in the process is something that's been evolving for 40, for 40 years. You know, you could say that the collaboration is it's making the work, but it's also been slowly building a kind of toolkit. It's a set of approaches, a set of frameworks, a set of ways of thinking that we collectively hold. Something different is happening, obviously, when new people join us for projects. Um, often, well, by definition, they're coming in without knowing the entire backstory, thankfully. Um, and they're also coming in with their own sets of skills and knowledges and um, uh, in, in, uh, intuitions. Um, and those are things that we use to disturb equilibrium. And that's tremendously valuable in terms of like stirring the pot of the rehearsal room and getting the work to change. And I think putting us a little bit off balance. Are these my eyes? Is this, is this my voice? You know, people coming in uh, make you see things that you haven't seen before or make you, you, you think about things in, in, in different ways. Sorry. Can you, can you hear me? Wait, okay. With Seke as a, a collaborator, it was really sort of interesting seeing his costume choices because he quite, quite often went for dresses or sort of quite, quite a feminine look, uh, which I, I just sort of found kind of interesting and refreshing. Like, he seemed to think that the whole costume uh, range was, was available to him. It was all, we were all Out of Order was the first time I joined you from the beginning of the process. So there wasn't an existing show to already just learn and do. Um, so that was interesting to be in the room while you're all thinking about what to make. I felt aware that I hadn't been in all of those previous processes before because a lot of the conversations, it seems, um, continue throughout the the years that you've been working together. So I hadn't been able to play with you before in that way. The process of making that material ended up being the show in a way, like a physical embodiment of weeks of rehearsals, sitting at a table and thinking about what, we get, what show we're going to make. And I, there were points of that process that were quite difficult, I think, for you all, you know, as theatre is impossible. Every time we performed it, I tried to find a balance of stepping into my truthful um, energy of being on stage and running around. Yeah, I brought an energy to it, but, but an energy actually that I think everybody had, but in their own ways. Yeah, I'm just thinking about every project as a kind of um, balancing act where you're, where you're bringing together a, a group of people um, 
some of whom will have been working with the company for a very long time, some of whom will be either newcomers or people who have worked on you know, one or two projects perhaps in the past. And the, com the project is a kind of conversation between all of those people, the energy that they bring, the intuitions and knowledges and particular skills and, and sensibilities that they have. And I think what it, what it needs is that everybody's doing this job of um, both listening to other people, um, being sensitive to what's happening in the room, being sensitive to the direction of the, you know, the drift of the project, but also that everybody, in one way or another, finds a way to make propositions that change the game. This yeah, I got a little lost back there. These are these Not words. Sure what, what they really are these projects where, on day one, we don't really know anything. Um, so I think as a, as, a, as a relative newcomer to the process, you're sort of stepping into this place where, actually, what is this? Um, and we can be very lost for quite long periods of time. Um, so you kind of need people to be calm uh, and not to freak out if you spent a month rehearsing and actually still it's not really clear what you're doing. Um, and it, it is like that for us. You know, we, we go long time researching uh, and takes time for the project to sort of find its, find its feet. I think that's intimidating for people, um, but I think what's been brilliant about, you know, Zeke, Nikki, or Jerry, or, or even Tyrone, who's, who's, you know, joined for uh, Signal to Noise as dramaturg, is that they're not people who, who panic uh, if, if you're facing like two, three, four weeks of, you know, pretty deep uncertainty about what you're, what you're doing staying in the conversation, keeping listening, keeping on adding new possibilities, that, that feels like the most important thing that people can do.